and I'm here representing Studio E Fabrics, which is a division of Jaftex Fabrics. And Jaftex, maybe you don't know the history of that. The first three letters of that stands for Jacob Abraham Fortunoff, the great, great grandfather of the people who are running the company presently. We are now on generation number four of running Jaftex. So you're dealing with a company that has a long history in this business. And uh, probably about uh, eight or 10 years ago, I went to Jaftex and I said, you need a line of solids. And they said, no, we don't. Everybody has solids. Nobody needs more solids. And I said, ah, but you need a new kind of solid. And actually it's an ancient kind of solid because what I brought into them as samples to urge them to weave the fabric were shot silks, shot wool, shot linen, and only a few shot cottons. And the term shot means that while the warp that's on the loom is one color, the weft, which goes back and forth, is shot from one side to the other mechanically, and it's a different color, and it produces a fabric that has depth and shade. Now, sometimes the two colors that are chosen are close. They're from the same color family. For instance, a bright yellow green and a dark green is going to yield some shade of green. And then every once in a while, you'll get some crazy color, like a... Do you wanna... Oh, oh, there's, there's two colors that show very well. All right, this one I think was called True Taupe. And it actually is a weave of brown and gray. And it produces a slightly textured solid. The interesting thing that you as retailers should know about using shot cottons is that if you know the two colors that go into that fabric, you know what this fabric immediately goes with, practically any brown or any gray. So you can help, you know, when you get those people who are dithering, what goes with what? I have no idea. You can start giving them shot cotton possibilities. And if you can see the two shot cotton colors in what they're trying to match, that's going to bring it together for you. Another nice thing about shot cottons is that they are what's called yarn dyed. It means that these threads, before they are even put on the loom and made into fabric, have gone through the complete dyeing process. So they are put on as brown and gray threads in this instance to yield this fabric. Now what that means is there is no wrong side and right side to a shot cotton. So if you have customers, I'm sure some of you do, and I will admit to having done this myself, especially late at night, I've put a template or a pattern on the wrong side of the fabric, I've cut out the wrong piece, and then I found myself without enough fabric to finish something because I've cut from the wrong side. When you're dealing with a shot cotton, there is no wrong and there is no right. When the fabric comes into your store, it will have a slightly shinier surface on the side that faces the consumer. And that's called calendaring. And it's done to most fabrics in this business. And it's simply ironing at a high heat. And it gives the fabric the nicest hand so that it will fold onto the machines and the bolts easily. But that little shine does not stay. It doesn't on your prints. It doesn't on the shot cottons. If you wash the shot cottons prior to using them in your quilt, all the shine will be knocked off. And the threads, of course, draw closer together. I happen to be a pre-washer. Now, I understand that there are two sides to this. You know, we can have one aisle with the washers and one aisle with the non-washers. But the fact of the matter is, is I like the texture that happens when a fabric has been washed. I'm also a little sensitive to chemicals and one of the chemicals that's sometimes used in fabric finishing is formaldehyde and that will make me break out. I used to have a fabric store and I do remember in the 70s and 80s and 90s going into a fabric store that had been closed up at night and the chemical smell was so intense that the help actually put out little bowls of bleach. Bleach is a base, okay? 
formaldehyde is an acid. And what you want is an acid and a base to counteract each other. And so they were putting out bleach at night in order for the formaldehyde smell to not overwhelm their customers. Doesn't happen with this fabric. Just a word, too, about things that have been in the news lately that make us uneasy and we might need some reassurance about. These fabrics are not woven in China. And that means that if there are more tariffs or more of a trade war with, with China, the price will not be affected. These fabrics are woven in India, which is the mother home of all cotton manufacturing anyway. And I'm so pleased. The people who actually started weaving our samples for us are people who have been weaving shot cottons for hundreds of years in this particular village. So we're really pleased about that. That's the short, long and short of um, shot cottons. I'm sure that some of you already sell shot cottons in your store. So it could be that you were just, I'm preaching to the choir here. I was thinking, oh, geez. <laughs> it, it, you know what, just pr prior to walking in, I thought about my husband. And um, I thought, you know, I wonder what he's doing today. <laughs> Well, if you've been married long enough, those kinds of things happen. <laughs> so I shouldn't have, have thought, oh, I wonder what Rod's doing right now. Anyway, <laughs> the presentation for this schoolhouse, I'm, you may not know this, but we have to write these proposals and have them into Quilts Incorporated before Christmas. So we have to supposedly know what we're doing six months ahead of time. So we do the best we can with the descriptions of schoolhouses to make sure that we're bringing you uh, the right kind of information. What happens in the intervening six months can be pretty interesting. <laughs> what I was going to do a presentation about was how you would fold fabrics for marketing within your store. But the only thing I might be able to show you new is a flag fold and I can do that in about five minutes. So I will do that and get it out of the way and then fulfill the description of the schoolhouse and we will go on to more interesting things, <laughs> okay? Everyone wants to sell fat quarters because it's a way for your customers to get a taste of a fabric and now many, many patterns are written for pre-cuts and they assume that everyone in the world knows what a fat quarter is. It's a piece of fabric that's approximately 18 by 22 inches. A fat quarter with a shot cotton is interesting because you will always be able to see the two colors. What does this color appear to you as from a distance? Purple, blue, purple, right. It is a weave of bright purple plus turquoise. Okay, so this is a common fold for a fat quarter. Okay, the selvage is over here. And you can fold from this way or this way. This is the most common way to fold. Okay, so now we have the selvage is over on the one side. Excuse me, the selvage is at the bottom. It's essentially folded in quarters with the cut edges here. If you're going to do a flag fold, by a flag fold, we mean something that ends up in approximately, we hope, an equilateral triangle. Okay? So you know your angles. You are quilt shop owners. And you know that then you can turn this and it becomes a triangle there. Try this upside down, okay? Just try this upside down. When you get to less than a complete fold, then you take the fabric and you tuck it in and fold it into a nice neat triangle. You stack these up six at a time and your potential customer can look through every one before they buy it. Some people prefer to put a piece of cardboard behind it to support it and some of it simply wrap ribbon around it three times. So when you sell fat quarters in your store in bundles, what is your preferred number that you do at a time? Six. Six works for you. What do you price 
your six fat quarters at. We decide to price our six fat quarters at the cost of one and one half yards. However, you've gone to the trouble of cutting fat quarters and of putting a pretty ribbon on them and thinking of particular color combinations that will be appealing. My advice to you is that you think about bumping up the price of the yard and a half to the next 99 cent. It will only give you less than 50 cents extra profit, but it will be a little bit of profit. So you won't feel like you're losing money when you tie every one of those sweet bundles up with ribbon. Now, you may think you're, you're selling six colors of shot cottons. However, what's involved in selling those six colors? The color of the ribbon is color number seven. Okay? And you need to make sure that it contrasts. This is packaged by our company, Studio E Fabrics. There are no peppered cottons that are black with white dots and red letters on them. So the color ribbon that you choose should be a contrast to whatever selection you do in your fat quarter bundle. And the other thing is, would you please price the fat quarter bundle? Because I can't tell you how many times people come in, of course. Now, some people just want your attention, okay? They're a pain. But that's okay. We're there to serve them. You need to put your price on every fat quarter bundle so that at the most, all they'd have to do is turn it over to see the price. Okay? And remember that 0 0.99 will give you a little less than 50 cents extra profit on top of a yard and a half and make it worth your while for you and your staff to bundle six at a time. People buy things from us not because we offer the best prices all the time. They have lots of things to compare us to. Online shops, the quilt store down the road, the big box store down the road. It's not always about the money. But presentation is huge in our business. And I can't tell you how many people tell me, oh, I bought this cute bundle and I can't bear to unwrap it. They're using it as some sort of decorative object at home, I think. <laughs> the same thing with strip sets called jelly rolls. They're just too cute. The only thing I use them for is very expensive pin cushions. But anyway, <laughs> marketing is where you guys are head and shoulders above big box stores or even online stores. Now, I hope that if you are a brick and mortar store that you consider having an online branch and have figured out what in your store you should sell online that is different than other people around you. So the flag fold, the six at a time, is what I highly recommend. However, these little bundles are wonderful too. Now, this, this is far more than six here because these were professionally bundled. I don't know. I think they fold them and then have someone sit on that, Selma. You know, <laughs> it, they have someone who you know, is hearty and sits and makes it completely flat because their bundles are always flatter than mine are. You know, but this is the kind of thing that you count up the fat quarters, what is the cost that you would charge, and then you go up a little tiny bit to pay you for the ribbon and the time. I just saw in a demonstration one of those, those cutters. This is all news to you guys. I'm going straight past the cutter with the crank. I'm going straight to electric because I'm going to be cutting a load of strip sets to sell to my students. So I think my, my uh, uh, schoolhouse is all about that presentation thing. And then I get an email from the art director at our company. Her name is Megan Downer. Now, unlike a lot of art directors that I know, Megan is also a quilt maker and a sewer herself. So she comes, goes across the street from the Studio E, the Jaftex headquarters, and takes a class at a store in New York called Gotham Fabrics. And in Gotham Fabrics, they urge you to be creative, and she gets together once a week with other people. And Megan decides that she's going to show them what peppered cottons can do. And when Megan starts to do something, you just need to get out of the way politely. So you've seen this stuff before. 
The last revival of chenille was when we were all going nuts for Northwoods flannels. Okay, remember the word homespun? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we were thinking, how do we sell a lot of flannels to people? So we were doing chenille cutting, which is cutting through top layers, but not cutting through the back of something, to create a really fuzzy, tactile surface. These feel so good. You know, these would be hard to pass around because if I did, people would just be getting orgasmic out there. <laughs> it's just, it feels so good. By the way, this is nothing like the chenille bedspreads that used to be sold at the edge of the road in southern states, okay? As a child, we'd be going past these chenille bedspreads hanging on the line, and I wanted one so bad. Mom, Mom, I want a chenille peacock with, with hearts. And my mother, who had really good taste, would go, drive faster, Scott, <laughs> like that. But the fact is, as a child, I loved the bright colors, and I loved the fuzziness of chenille. What if we were to bring chenille back into usage? Perhaps not to the extent of the uh, uh, flannels that we sold millions of yards of. How could we make these things modern? So that was what Megan was bringing to the people at Gotham Quilts. Isn't that cool? Five layers of fabric with a small amount of chenille highlighted here a border and several matching borders and then of course she had to do yet another color on the back and with of course this has a lovely down pillow so we're going for your hearts in a couple of ways we're not going to go for any polyester pillow fill we want down we want chenille and we want down i am fascinated by what she's starting to do here and that is the handout that you got when you came in is about this technique, which we're calling it modern chenille, because right now we're thinking, would you like to experiment? And that handout will tell you how to do an experimental block this size and go home and see what your people at home could come up with here. Because peppered cottons are yarn dyed, when they are cut through, there is no white showing. The threads are completely dyed the particular colors. And when you cut the chenille and you brush it and wash it and dry it, and you bring up this beautiful texture, it's going to stay this color forever. Does anyone remember doing chenille in their stores way back when? When did it start to die out, you think? Still used for panels. Still used for panels. Okay. It's also coming into our industry through uh, the embroidery patterns of Kimber Bell. And they're using chenille for small details, like in her holiday uh, Santa Claus things, that's doing a little beard. Oh, this is Karen Montgomery. Are these Kimber Bell patterns? Yes. OK. So look at that. You know, just a little bit of something. Can I let people? Okay, all right. Just the, the difference is yes. these were done with Kim's fabric, Kimber Bell fabric, which white on the back like a regular cotton fabric. You can pass them around. Um, but if you use the pepper cottons, of course, they're colored the whole way through. So you don't get that white that's showing. How many color. different colors did you use? Uh, all the same layer? Okay, this one up here, the orange has three. This green has three. This one has five. No, they're all different. Now, it should start to appear to you, even though I know some of you are ashamed of the fact that we're in business to make money, that this will sell fabric because it is a layered technique. And you could kit chenille projects because you could cut fat quarters and they could make something like this. This is eight inches square, as your directions talk about. Eight inches square here. Put on a 10 inch square piece of fabric. 
and that is then inserted and strips sewn around it to make a pillow. Is this intriguing to you? It is. You, do, you, do you think this would be a way to bring an old needlework technique into a more modern look? You know? Oh, fl how to fluff your chenille. Well, there's how to cut your chenille and how to fluff your chenille. <laughs> okay. There are chenille cutting mats. There are chenille cutters of different sizes. And then there are chenille scissors. If you've come across a pair of scissors that looks like this and you have no idea what that's about, these are chenille scissors. And what they're made to do is to go down through four to five layers but not cut a back layer. Okay, so the directions that are there in the chenille handout will, <laughs> she says on several occasions, do not cut through the back. <laughs> okay, we have to have something to lay on. Once you do the, the sewing of parallel diagonal lines and you cut between those parallel sewn lines, then you have to fluff it. It will immediately start to bloom and you'll be able to see down inside it that there are layers of color, but then you have to get rough with it. What, what uh, technique do you like to use? Well, um, if you were a machine embroidery person and you are familiar with Kimberbell, Kimberbell gives you a nail pile, a fingernail pile, to rough over top of it. Um, I know Kim real well, and the reason that she gives you a nail file is because it's cheaper than giving you a brush. <laughs> but an old toothbrush, for a small project works great, or a regular scrub brush works great. Throwing it in the laundry works yeah. great. And one thing I'm not sure if yeah. we covered is, when you chenille, it has to be on the bias. Don't, never so straight, you'll just get threads. It has to be on an angle, mm -hmm. okay? It doesn't have to be straight, it can be curved. You can do wavy lines, but it has to be on the bias so that you get fraying instead of straight. There is actually a chenille brush out there now that you can sell. You can there sell is a chenille brushes. brush. It's harder to find. It's harder to find. But I think it's worth, if, the, if you start to pick up on this technique, or if you sell embroidery, and you run into directions which um, uh, suggest chenille, searching out a chenille brush at this market would be a good idea. Uh -huh. Um, as long as you fray about a half inch on each edge, they will not fray any farther. Um, that one's been washed multiple times. Um, I actually prefer washing my fabric prior to doing a project, and then I would rather iron the fabric and do whatever the project is. It just depends on whether you're one of those dive-in people or you want to be super careful. Right. You may do either. That's a great project if you are a sewing machine store and you uh, demo machine embroidery. Pepper cotton with some material magic on it and no stabilizer. You can hoop it, embroider it, rinse that material magic out, and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm.